This much we know. Nine people are killed, more injured from Sunday's flotilla raid on the warm waters of the Mediterranean. The country of Israel has now become somewhat of a pariah. But, and this is a big but, there's still much unknown about what exactly happened during those pre-dawn hours. To cordially discuss this, Daniel Pollack of the Zionist Organization of America and from New York, Norman Finkelstein, author of A Farewell to Israel, The Coming Breakup of American Zionism. Now, Mr. Finglish, I'm going to go ahead and go straight to you first, if, if that's okay. Uh, let's talk about uh, the fact that we don't know exactly what had happened. Uh, well, for example, who, who started it, who, who threw the first punch, who, who shot the first uh, bullets. Uh, we don't know exactly what happened. There's still an investigation going on. Do you have any sort of insight into that uh, comment? Well, we know enough to know that Israel is guilty of serious crimes. Number one, the blockade that Israel imposed on Gaza is a flagrant violation of international law, according to Amnesty International. Number two, it was a humanitarian convoy. Number three, it was in international waters. Number four, Israel launched a commando, an armed commando raid in the dead of night. Number five, even if you grant for the sake of argument that Israel had the right to attack the ship, why didn't it simply disable the propeller on the boat? Israel has a formidable navy. It patrols the entire Mediterranean. Why didn't it surround the ship? Why did it choose the most violent option, an armed commando raid in the dead of night, leaving aside that Israel had no right whatsoever to impede a humanitarian ship from trying to su provide supplies M to Ms. a population that's facing, in the words of Amnesty International, a humanitarian crisis. Mr. Pollack, uh, in a lot of points brought up by Mr. Finkelstein, uh, a lot of good questions, a lot of questions people around the world are asking. I'm guessing you probably have something to say about that. And, and, for, the, and for both gentlemen, Mr. Pollack and Mr. Finkelstein, if you want to go ahead and question each other, you're more than welcome to go ahead and do that. I'd love to, but first let me start out with some facts. Uh, unfortunately, Dr. Finkelstein is wrong about each of the things he said, practically. Uh, the embargo and the inspection of goods that are destined for Gaza is perfectly legal. I happen to be a former naval officer in the U.S. Navy, and each of the things he said is mistaken. First of all, the fact that needs to be remembered is that the government of Gaza, Hamas, the de facto government there, has been launching missiles, even in the last week, against the civilian population of Israel. In order to deal with that, Israel, under international law, is entitled to protect its people. The way they're doing this is by regulating the weapons that Iran is trying to send to Hamas, which is an organization that openly advocates the destruction of Israel and the killing of all Jews, including Mr. Finkelstein, as Dean actually. In their charter, they call for the killing of all Jews. So they're perfectly correct to have a stop and search proposal. There are some other facts that are really indisputable. The ships were offered to unload their cargo at an Israeli port, Ashdod, and if they had done so, there would have been no violence. Five out of the six ships did not offer resistance to the Israeli commandos who landed on them, and there was no violence on those ships. We actually don't actually have a need to investigate a great deal. The videos from the ship itself show a clear chronology. The Israelis' soldiers coming down with paint guns on their back onto the ships, and the terrorists, who were a welcoming committee, beating them with knives, sticks, and knocking one Israeli soldier 20 feet down from one deck to the other. It was only after their lives were in danger that the Israeli soldiers reacted with violence. Until then, you can clearly see from the video that they're doing everything they can to prevent the loss of life. As for the other things that uh, Dr. Well, Finkelstein let, said, let me, let me just make one more point, doctor. That is that the mm -hmm. other options you said actually had the potential, if the... Uh, uh, to actually result in greater loss of life. Using the Israeli naval force to disable the ships had a... Nobody had a asked you to use the Israeli naval force. Listen, you may be a naval officer, but number one, you're not a lawyer. 
Neither Amnesty are you, sir. Amnesty International knows the law. Amnesty International, I'm not claiming to be, but I'm Amnesty totally International Amnesty International. Amnesty International is an openly anti-Israel Amnesty organization. Inter Amnesty International, oh, sir, I know everybody in the world is anti-Israel except out Benjamin that, Netanyahu. It turns out that Am almost everyone Amnesty in the world is anti-Israel. Amnesty International, oh, sir, is. you're going to have to let me talk. No, you're not, you're going to have to let me talk. I was polite to you. So, so try to be polite in return. Okay? Amnesty International, which does know the law, said that the blockade is a flagrant violation of international law. The Goldstone mission, headed by Richard Goldstone, who's an internationally renowned jurist, he said the blockade is a, po is a, possible, viola a, po a possible crime against humanity. The law is quite clear there. Now as to what happened on that night in the flotilla. You say the videos show clearly this and the videos show clearly that. Whose videos? The there videos. were many people on that boat. Why were, their, why were their camera equipment confiscated? Why were their videos confiscated? Why was their photogra photographic evidence confiscated? May I ask what you? we have is the Israeli version of what happened. The, we don't yet have the videos, but we might tomorrow. We don't yet have the, the version or the video evidence from the passengers on the boat. Actually, if Israel not has nothing to hide, why, if Israel has nothing to hide, why did it seize all the photographic evidence of the passengers on the ship? It seized let's look at another question, sir. <laughs> Mr. Naval Officer, let's look at another question. The Israelis claimed that the commandos were shocked, they were surprised at the resistance, that they didn't expect any resistance, and that's why the Malay happened. Well, if that's true, they expected no resistance, and why did they launch an armed commando raid in the dead of night? Why did they simply board the ship in broad daylight? If they really expected no resistance, they could have just come up to the boat and boarded. Does the Israeli claim make any sense? Well, let me let's look at another one of the Israeli claims. Let me answer, claim. let me answer these yeah, let's look at another one. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the first thing is, is about the videos. Uh, it is clear because these things have timestamps. In fact, the people on the boats were in contact and released videos during the attack. We have uh, numerous videos from, taken from on board from the, uh, the people who were involved in the mission. But it's and very clear, the answer to your question that were confiscated. And, and it's very clear why the, the videos were taken, because before the evidence that shows the actual sequence of events can be doctored or destroyed. That's why the Israelis did it. And it's a, it's a fairly... Oh, is that why? Uh, yes, sir. That is, is that why? Because they wanted to preserve the evidence. Well, they actually have you shown it's the possible videos. They se do you no. think it's possible they seized it because they wanted to destroy the evidence? That's not possible. Well, I don't know if you've seen Israel you've seen couldn't the possibly do that. There, there's no doubt these guys no, are propelling down the helicopter. No, you haven't seen the evidence. Uh, I, think, I think you're going to regret what you're saying because I, I have so. very good information me... that tomorrow... A person on board the ship, she managed to conceal three microchips let in me, her underwear. Let me, let me go and she's going to release the video evidence tomorrow. L let me interrupt both of you at this point because we have about two minutes left. And the, I have a question about this, and I thought this was a very uh, valid question. The fact that this, is, this all took place in international waters, and I just want to hear a reaction from both sides about the fact that this supposedly happened in international no, there's, waters. There's no, there's no, no supposed. It. Okay, it, it happened right. in international waters. Israel has admitted the exact location where it is. When you have an international blockade because of there's a situation of belligerency, blockades typically take place in international waters. Every blockade that's occurred in the last hundred years, the ships that are blockading take their blockading action in international waters. What happens is if a neutral ship, like a Turkish ship, comes across the international blockade, the navy of the belligerent power approaches the ship and says, are you carrying any contraband? In this case, the ship refused to follow the legitimate directions of that Israeli navy ship. Uh, the directions you don't know, were, you don't know yes, that. We do. What, what yes, we, we do, do we know have, is, we what we do know is, there was, an armed, there was an armed commando raid in the dead of night in international waters. That's what we know for sure. The captain After that, I can't tell you what happened. Well, you I can't, certainly but wouldn't believe a single word from the Israeli government. I'm you sure you remember you the Israeli I'm government sure during the attack on Gaza when it was saying over and over again, we didn't use any white phosphorus. 
We're not using any white phosphorus. Do you remember that? I do. The same Israeli and government, it's, which it's lies and lies and lies again, they, and they then relies lie. on people like you to repeat the lies while they try to seize and then destroy the evidence. You know, doctor, and you you're expect me, to your you expect the listeners. You're, you're entitled to your own opinion. Uh, but you're sir, not I'm repeating to your own the facts. facts. Didn't Israel say? Didn't Israel say during the Gaza massacre that it wasn't using white phosphorus, or have you this, forgotten? You're, you're you wrong about the white phosphorus. You said three times. Well. Israel conducted that uh, Hamas anti-Hamas operation in order to save Israeli really? lives. Really? I have one more comment to make. Well, actually, I, really? and I hate to do this. I had to cut you both off because we did run out of time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that took all of ten minutes. But I want to thank both of you, Daniel Pollock and also Norman Finkelstein up in New York, for being with, with us and at least shedding some a little bit more light about this story. Thank you. Really, for bo uh, for both of you, to both of you, for for telling us a little bit more about what had happened uh, over the weekend. Thank you, sir. Thank you.